All right. In today's podcast, because of a question from one of my clients, we're going to talk mainly about protein. We're going to touch on that. I'll cover the rest of the macronutrients just to go over it. I think I've talked about it before. We're just going to have a little recap on that. And then just how to deal with something with your personal trainer and just the personal trainer client relationship. Okay. Stuff that's important for that. Right. But let's start with protein. So he was asking, how much should I get? He said, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. What's the truth about it? And he also heard it could be bad for your kidneys. First of all, protein, high protein diets are not bad for your kidneys unless you already have pre existing kidney damage. If you have kidney damage, then the protein, a high protein diet would be detrimental to the recovery of your kidneys. It can make the already existing damage get a lot worse. So people with severe kidney damage, they tend to get recommended by their doctors, a low protein, a protein restricted diet. Okay. But that's just if you have kidney damage. So if you don't have kidney damage, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Up your protein. It's not going to hurt you in saying that, of course, don't go crazy, but generally speaking, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay. Protein, dietary stuff, it's challenging because these days there's a lot of books that would conflict with each other on some level. There's books saying if you go totally vegan, you'll cure all these things, heart disease, cancer, whatever. And then if you go all meat, you'll cure heart disease, cancer, everything. So there's a lot of conflicting information out there. I bet a lot of those books are basing their studies on vegan versus the standard American diet or else high quality protein, animal-based products versus standard American diet. So a lot of processed crap. If you go carnivore or if you go vegan, I'll bet it's better than Hot Pocket. Of course, whatever they're basing it on, if they're comparing it to the standard American diet, most anything is better than the standard American diet. Okay. But as far as protein is concerned, there is a lot of conflicting information out there. You can get all of your protein from plants. You can be a vegan and get absolutely everything you need. Just watch a documentary called The Game Changers if you want to challenge that. And he goes through it very thoroughly. Somebody even tried to challenge the guy who made that. And those two people were on the Joe Rogan podcast together. The guy that did the Game Changers documentary destroyed the other guy with how well prepared he was with his knowledge. And the other guy was just I think the other guy felt dumb in the end, honestly. At the end, it was like, don't mess with that guy. That guy's a UFC fighter too, the guy that made the game changer. So it's don't mess with him in the ring and don't mess with him intellectually because he will destroy you. He goes just to show that basically what you want to look for is you have essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Anytime anything is considered essential, that simply means that your body can't make it. Your body lacks the ability to create that amino acid or it lacks the ability to create these proteins. So amino acids are the building blocks of a fully constructed protein. So if you can't make it out of whatever, you have to consume it. So to be able to get everything you need, people would say, you can't get all your amino acids from plants. Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Especially if you're not vegan, but you're vegetarian, you add some eggs in there, you're covered. You have everything you need. But as far as quality with it, you know, how good the stuff is you're eating, that's a really big, important factor. So if you are eating a high protein diet or just getting enough protein. Some chicken breast has everything in it you could possibly need as far as proteins are concerned. You could have some eggs. Those are phenomenal. People worry about the egg yolks. To me, the egg yolk is not a bad thing. To me, the cholesterol in there is not a bad thing if you're working out. If you consume something like high cholesterol or high refined sugars, that can be bad for you if you consume it and then don't use it. But if you consume it and you use it for what it's for, it's not that big a deal. The cholesterol in eggs is actually incredibly beneficial for building muscle and building strength. If you have a reduced cholesterol diet, you actually will have reduced ability to build muscle and build strength as it's been studied, as studies have shown. So the quality of the food that you have is really important. And so what people do sometimes though, is they'll supplement with protein shakes. All that stuff can be fine. I'm really big on whole foods are where your quality is at. So actual chicken breast, actual eggs, beans and rice as a combination. Beans and rice are known to be a complete protein. You have every amino acid you possibly need in there. So if you have beans and rice together as a vegan person, you're getting all of your protein. 
all the types of protein that you need, all the types of amino acids. But you can do it however you want. But there are people who, again, feel that you should be vegan or vegetarian. There's people that you should go heavy on the meat. The main thing to me is just experiment with it. Try it. I've tried it. I've tried different diets. I've tried going, it wasn't keto exactly. It was back when Atkins was a big deal. I tried doing that. I found it to be incredibly exhausting. I was really fatigued and I had a labor intensive job at the time too. So I, I quit that pretty quick. I know some people would argue with me on that though. They would say, well, you got to try it the new way, the way it's been studied. And if you did it, you would feel so much better. You'd have increased energy. I'd be down to give it a whirl. I would. I'd be down to give it a shot. I'm always using my own body for different experiments to, just to see how fit can I get? How far can we take this? But that's what you should do. You should try different proteins, try different diets, try higher protein in your diet. See if it helps. See if you feel better in the gym. Try lower protein. I several times have actually found that going pretty low on my protein below the recommended level didn't actually do anything that I, I felt fine in the gym. I had no problem. So experiment with it. Not that I'm recommending that. I just, I'm very careful with myself. And sometimes though, I'll break the rules just to see what would happen. It's exactly how I come up with this workout that I have all my clients do. Play with it. As far as the rest of the macronutrients, bigger ones, so proteins, carbs, fats, micro, of course, is all of your vitamins and minerals. Just to touch on the other macronutrients, there's a lot of, I uh, mentioned fat and cholesterol in eggs, or there's a decent amount. Some people worry about that, but I would say, I would venture to say it's actually a good thing as far as building strength, but try different plant-based fats, try different animal fats in your diet and just see how you feel when you add these different things in. As far as fats are concerned, I think one of the main things is not going too crazy on the animal fats. And I would prefer most of my people go a little bit heavier on high quality plant-based fats. None of this rancid oil crap that's in everyone's cupboards. I'm talking about actual extra virgin olive oil. If it's high quality, you should be able to dip your pinky in and taste it. And it should taste good. The olive oil itself, it should taste fruity and peppery. It should taste good. Plant-based fats, atherosclerosis, I'm going to butcher it. What's up? I'm going to say the hardening of the artery walls. Plant-based fats have been found to be the only thing, especially olive oil to clear that. It was thought to be irreversible before atherosclerosis, the hardening of the artery walls, but it gets clogged by a lot of different factors, I'm sure. But one of them is cholesterol and fats in animal proteins. But if you have plant-based, that actually helps clear it out. So when people were, when studied, when people are taken, they are removed from animal fats from their diet. When you take the animal fats out and you put in high quality plant-based fats, that has cleared atherosclerosis up for a lot of people. I think it cleared in whatever percent of the subjects, a high percent of the subjects, it reversed it by 80 some percent over the course of one year, which is impressive, especially when it's a disease that at that time, it was thought that it's irreversible. So it's impressive that it was there. Someone figured out how to reverse it. Plant-based fats, very important, but some animal fats too, like again, eggs. I eat the egg yolks for sure. I'll have steak. I'll have the, some of the fat that's on it. It's not a big deal. I even have bacon. I don't eat it all the time, but I do have stuff like that as well. Carbohydrates, just to touch on that real quick. People talk about refined carbs as not being good. People, people think carbs are horrendous for you. That's just popular these days. I can't wait till that goes away. It'll go away. For a while, it was fat was the enemy. And then we realized how beneficial it can be. Fats are higher in calories, so you got to be careful. A gram of fat is nine calories, whereas a gram of protein is four and a gram of carbs is four. So you got to be careful with it because it's very high caloric value. But anyways, it's always something we're ragging on. So don't listen to that. Have a balanced diet. But as far as carbohydrates, when you refine them too much, like flour, a lot of the actual wheat that it comes from is taken out. Only a small portion of it is included. So you're not getting the whole food, which is why some of that stuff can be bad for you sometimes. Or when you just refine things down to where they're just sugar, you take out a lot of the fiber in the fruits and vegetables, you get rid of all that. You just have the actual sugar that's left over. Like a juice, if you were to juice something, you see all the extra stuff that goes away and you just have the actual juice of an apple that has the sugar, so it tastes good. And it might have some other nutrients still, especially if it's freshly juiced or whatever in a juicer, but it gets rid of a lot of the fiber. It gets rid of a lot of the vitamins and minerals. It gets rid of a lot of stuff that's really good for you. If you took an apple and just baked it, let's say, and then ate it that way, it's still refined because it's broken down somewhat. So it will taste sweeter, but it has everything there. So that's far better for you than just the juice of it. Basically, 
carbs, any kind of carb will taste better the more it's refined. Even a piece of rice. Take a piece of rice, put it inside like the cheek and just let it sit there next to your gums, whatever. It should start to taste sweeter over time because the length of the chain in a carbohydrate, the more it's broken down, the shorter the chain is, the sweeter it tastes. So refining carbohydrates, refining things means refining it by breaking those bonds more and more. It tastes sweeter and sweeter. So that same piece of rice will taste sweeter because your saliva is beginning to break down the enzymes are breaking everything down. So the chains of the carbohydrate are breaking down in your mouth and it should start to taste sweeter over time. Yeah, so it's them tasting sweeter or being more broken down is not necessarily a bad thing. It's when you remove all the vitamins, fibers, all that stuff, you just left with the sugar itself. Then it can become a problem. As far as really simple sugars, very fine stuff like candy bar, chocolate, candy bar, the big problem with that stuff versus a piece of fruit, which also has sugar. People often say, oh, they have close to the same amount of sugar. Let's think of fruit and this candy bar. Sure, they have the same amount of carbs, the same amount of sugar. The difference is, first of all, there's way more vitamins and minerals in the fruit, of course, than the candy bar. Unless someone tries to put some vitamins in there and trick me, but whatever. There's way more vitamins and minerals typically in the fruit and vegetables than the candy bar. But there's a bond still. It's not refined, the fruit. So as you eat it, your body can regulate the absorption of it. Your body can decide, okay, I'm going to break this bond that slows time down and then it's going to absorb it through your intestines and then go into your bloodstream and your blood sugar won't spike nearly as much as when you have a candy bar. The bond is pre-broken. It's refined to that point where there's no more bond in the carbohydrate and your intestines can't regulate it. You don't have to break it down. It absorbs very quickly into your bloodstream, causes a huge blood sugar spike. So that can be a little bit more detrimental, especially if you're a diabetic trying to watch your blood sugar not spike too high. So it's also challenging on your body. So that's the problem with refining carbohydrates too far. You can take a lot of good stuff out and then your body can't really self-regulate nearly as well. But otherwise, carbs just have a bad rap these days. But I love carbs. I eat a lot of carbohydrates. They make you feel phenomenal in the gym. I highly recommend them. But balance, of course, and good, decent carbohydrates, not pastries, whatever, candy bars, every now. But I think that's about it for the macronutrients. Again, just to, with the protein, try different things. Just experiment with it. But there's so much out there. There's so much. I know it gets really confusing. But I say have a balanced variety of everything is my recommendation. And as far as how much, I forget if I, I didn't mention this first. I was going to mention this. Don't quote me on this. But I just remember reading a long time ago. I tried to look for it again. I couldn't find it. But there was a study that was the recommendation for protein a long time. I think it was like in the 40s. And they recommended one gram per whatever of body weight. I was told when I was younger that I was shown that study that was done in Europe. And it was one kilo. It was one gram of protein per one kilo of body weight. And that was recommendation for Olympic athletes over there. That's much lower than the recommendation today. Maybe more studying has been done to show that higher protein is more beneficial. That's fine. But I was told when I was younger that this guy sold protein supplements too. That it was actually the protein companies that took that information in America and said, oh yeah, we recommend one gram per, but in America, pound of body weight. And that can be difficult to get to through a normal diet. Of course, what's the answer? They are holding the solution. Use our protein supplement. Use our protein powder. But try it. I don't typically, I've tried protein powders, all kinds of stuff, been on and off of it. I don't see a big difference. I think just eat a whole meal. You'll feel a lot better. And then, so that's my recommendation as far as protein is concerned. Okay. Variety and experiment with it. And if you want to go I, one gram per body weight, I don't think it's going to hurt you. That's close to the recommendation these days. And that, I think that's fine, but it's just funny where it comes from. But the other thing to touch on real fast, as far as you with your coach, Tell them everything. Tell them everything. I know sometimes you don't want to tell them because you're like, he's having me do this specific program. He said to do this, but I'm experimenting with all kinds of stuff. I know I have one client laughing their ass off right now. Tell them everything because even if you're going to break the rules, go ahead, break the rules. And that just makes me go, okay, that's fine. Now I know. And if you're sore, I'm going to go, that's why. Or if your workout's not going the way it should, you're like, it was a little challenging today. Yep. It's because of what you're doing. And I can help direct that stuff.
but tell him. I, I even had a client, he didn't mean to not tell me, but we, he had a specific program. I gave him a split routine. That's what he wanted. And we did chest day, arm day, shoulder day, leg day, off day, and then rinse and repeat that cycle. And we got back to his chest day and he was just struggling. He was dying. And I was like, this is so simple. Working out to me, I've been doing it for 27 years. It's so simple and straightforward. It works. It works all the time, every time, right? It always works. Why is he not strong today? And I was, and we're, and we got like through half of the workout and I was finally like, okay, let's recap. You were doing chest day today. And then yesterday was your rest day. And then the day before that was leg day. And the day before that, he goes, oh, well, no, I got messed up with my schedule. And then I just, I had, I messaged him a few times. And then, so yesterday I actually did shoulders and I was like, Oh my, that is why that is what it is. If I known that in the beginning, I might've actually had him do leg day today and then take a day off and then we'll do chest day. Maybe that's why he didn't tell me because he knew I'd make him do leg day, but it's really important for your coach to know everything you're doing. It's fine. If you're breaking the rules, it's fine. If you're like, especially if you're like entering your info on calories and you're charting things and you're like, I'm only eating these things. I'm not losing weight. And you're like, I don't want to tell them about the ice cream with the cake and this and that. Tell me, because otherwise I'm racking my brain going, is this patient zero that like actually cannot eat bad and not lose weight? Like you're the first person. What the hell? And rather than have me thinking that and going, what's going on these days, I'll just assume I'm like, no, they're eating stuff, not telling me, or they're doing extra workouts and they're not telling me, or they're doing something. No better these days. I've been training people long enough at this point, but Tell your coach you're breaking the rules. Tell your coach you're eating extra stuff. Tell your coach, whatever. That way they go, okay, it's not my program. It's not whatever. It's this person being naughty, breaking the rules, doing all that stuff. So again, I know I have one guy laughing right now, but I've had other people do that too, like I mentioned. All right. Till next time, have fun with it. Experiment a lot. See how you feel. Just try different dietary stuff. I love trying new things, especially if I read about it. And I'm like, this makes sense. I get excited to try it. You should get excited to try it too. You should be excited to try the new thing, the next thing. You should be excited that your numbers going up. You should be excited that your any kind of dietary stuff you're trying, any kind of experiment you're running on your body, you should be excited about it. You should have fun with it. Okay. All right. Till next time. See you guys.